This is Law of Attraction Explored. I'm Tim Grimes. Some of you are probably wondering about my coaching, so I thought I would just take a minute to explain what it is that I offer. What I do with people is get real deep. And what do I mean by we get deep? Well, you know, if you've been listening to this podcast, you know exactly what I mean when I say that. The kind of coaching that I offer is meant to transform your life. And I feel very confident that it will transform your life and that you'll enjoy doing it. And if you don't, to be frank, you don't have to pay me. I like working with people who want to go deep. People who are willing to explore what's going on in the inside and realize that there's nothing wrong with them and that what is going on in the inside is actually good. And dare we say it, what's going on in the inside is actually God. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, you can always email me at info at radicalcounselor.com or you can just go to my website, radicalcounselor.com. And I hope you enjoyed the episode. So I thought that we would have a meditative episode today and look at something that I've mentioned in passing before and that I actually remember writing about in the Neville Goddard commentary I made in Manifestation Through Relaxation way back in 2016. And that is that so many of these ideas and concepts we talk about in regards to the law of attraction, on an inner level, on a psychological level, on, we could say, a spiritual level, it does not come back to adding anything in your life. It does not come back to trying to add anything to who you are or what you are. It comes back much more on an inner psychological, spiritual level to subtracting what is not necessary in your life inwardly. What is distracting you What is deluding you? What is confusing you? What is making you anxious and worried? It's subtracting that. And as we so often discuss what makes us anxious and worried, more often than not, is simply our overthinking. It's our tendency to think about what is not necessary and to think negatively when no negative thought is needed. Back in 2016, around the same time I published Manifestation Through Relaxation, perhaps a little bit after, I found another Law of Attraction teacher that I do not believe we've talked about on this podcast. His name is Joel Goldsmith. He's most famous for his book and his philosophy called The Infinite Way. I really liked what he had to say. And I think I was also too new to these law of attraction concepts, too new to this concept of Christian mysticism to appreciate what Goldsmith was saying as much as I have recently in the last month or two when I've gotten back into his teachings. Joel Goldsmith is a great law of attraction teacher and one might say a great spiritual teacher, a wonderful Christian mystic. And it's worth noting that I was able to write multiple books of commentary on Neville's work and make at least some semblance of sense of it. But I was unable to appreciate Goldsmith until recently. And that's because what Goldsmith is saying is a harder pill to swallow for most people. And 
you might argue is, for many of us, more aligned with the deepest truth we find within ourselves and which is impossible to articulate. And so much of what Goldsmith is talking about is subtraction instead of addition. While you could easily interpret Neville or misinterpret Neville to believe that what Neville is saying is about adding things to your life, a Christian mystic like Goldsmith makes it very clear that adding anything to your life is impossible on a spiritual manifesting level. And I think that's probably what Neville was saying too, but Goldsmith articulates this more clearly. And I know he is the kind of teacher that many of you will appreciate if you've been into these ideas for a number of years, because it's a mature teaching. But to give you an idea of the foolishness of this current Neville craze that we find on places like YouTube and Reddit. Let me read to you what Goldsmith wrote in his book, Invisible Supply. Goldsmith wrote, Our outer experience is the externalization of our state of consciousness. We do not have to talk about what is going on in our consciousness. The mere fact that it is happening will externalize itself. In other words, if you are living morning, noon, and night in the realization that I and my Father are one, and I am ever with my Father, and all that the Father has is mine, if you abide in that truth and keep it locked up in you, eventually others will see that it is absolutely true. It would be foolish to tell it to anyone because no one would believe it. What is locked up in us in the form of consciousness is outwardly evident. We do not need to voice it. Let us begin to live in the realization that the kingdom of God is within us and do all of our communing with God within ourselves in secrecy. Let us ignore man whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of. Live your inner life in secret contemplation with the Father. You are now living at one with the vine, with the Christ who is within you. Live your life wholly in an inner communion with God by shutting off the outer avenues and channels and begin to draw your good from the within this. That's Joel Goldsmith speaking and writing around the same time as Neville. And you see how people flaunt their quote-unquote manifestations and talk about manifesting specific things and specific persons supposedly on social media. Then you hear what Goldsmith says there, which sounds so similar to something that Neville would say. And you realize how foolish it is to go down that avenue. We often talk about the absolute method on this show. Waiting for him, waiting for God, waiting for the Father, being one with the Father. People like H. Emily Cady, Emmett Fox, Joseph Murphy, or Richard Dotz in contemporary times discuss this so well, just being one with the Father, the absolute method. Goldsmith describes this probably as well as anybody. This is subtraction, not addition. He writes elsewhere in Invisible Supply. Thinking of supply, companionship, or home as things separate and apart from God and then trying to demonstrate them actually separates us from these things. God is the only health there is and the only supply there is. There is no peace, no satisfaction, no safety, no security except in and through God. No happy people live on earth except those who have found the measure of God. Young people may find temporary satisfaction in physical health, in outer companionship, in joy, in the handling of money, but those are temporary. I am sure that there come to them moments of void, moments of blankness, when they wonder what it is all about. 
Aside from the very young who are still delighting in the joys of the outer world, it is safe to say that no men or women on earth have ever found happiness or achieved peace of mind or soul except to the degree that they have realized God. That cuts right to the chase, doesn't it? And we don't always use spiritual language on this show. We don't always talk about God. And in my opinion, when it comes to the law of attraction, we don't need to talk about God to appreciate its concepts. People like Emile Couet or Maxwell Maltz can use very non-religious language to convey these same points. But people like Emile Couet and Maxwell Maltz were also, I think, undeniably deeply in touch with their higher self, with God. So while we don't have to use religious or spiritual language to get these points across, I do think we have to be in touch with that deepest part of ourselves to appreciate these points. And we recognize that trying or striving to get a certain thing in our life without appreciating those deeper points, without appreciating God, is fruitless. I just want to read to you one more brief quote from Goldsmith from Invisible Supply because I think that you will appreciate it, and I encourage you, if you are not new to these Law of Attraction concepts and you are unfamiliar with Joel Goldsmith or haven't read his teachings in a number of years, to revisit them, because I know I personally have really appreciated them uh, over the last month or so. This is a very simple quote, and I think that it summates the absolute method that we often talk about almost perfectly. Goldsmith writes, The greatest lesson the infinite way has to offer is the often repeated truth that we need seek and find only God and leave everything else alone. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and the rest of these things will be added unto us. If we become in touch with God, we recognize that there is perfection right now. And the way to do that, in my experience, is usually not to try to add something to our life, because God cannot be added to our life. God is already here. It is subtracting the unnecessary and getting real and getting present with what we are. And then recognizing the obvious, which is the divine, which is right now, which is God.